Hi everyone, I'm Michael Short. This is Let's Go Outdoors. Let's go outdoors where the waters run clear and cold. Mother Nature's world is better than gold. So much to see, so much to do. Let's go outdoors. Let's Go Outdoors with Michael Short. Supported by the Alberta Conservation Association. Conserving Alberta's wild side. Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Go Outdoors. I'm Michael Short. Coming up, these fish look comfortable enough, but you might be surprised to learn where this water came from that they're swimming in. That's gross. It turns out not all leeches are bloodsuckers, as Alma finds out when she joins this high school class on an outdoor science project. People come to be changed, to learn. We sit down to hear what Devonian Botanic Garden Director Lee Foote has to say about the connection people make with this garden. And Brad Fenson will be along with a few tips on how to choose the best knife for your outdoor adventure. Today we're coming to you from the Devonian Gardens just southwest of Edmonton and it's a real pleasure to be joined by one of our co-hosts, Alma Medmed Begovic. So glad you're here because you know 180 acres uh, out there and I was worried you're going to get lost. <laughs> well you're right Michael, there is a lot of variety here from the English style to the Japanese gardens, not to mention my favorite, the herb section. <laughs> Now, I understand, Alma, you're going to be spending some time with some high school students. Well, interesting you mentioned that. Did you know that over the course of the year, over 7,000 students visit the Devonian Gardens? And later in the show, I'll have an example of just a few of the things they learn about while they're here. But first, I hear that some kids are about to roast some apples. So when it comes to food, you know what? I'm just going to go check out what they're doing. The Fall Family Festival at the Devonian Botanic Garden is a chance for families to get out and enjoy the final days of summer. On the way to the Pine Pavilion, they can take in the splendor of many gardens. It's a precious moment as a major frost will soon mark the end of this opportunity. At the pavilion, there's lots to partake in, building and painting a birdhouse, creating your own scarecrow, making a summer flower arrangement, or Alma's favorite, Baking an apple. Ben and Madeline are going to try their baked apples, and I want to know what they taste like. Well, they look delicious. Mine's delicious. It looks delicious. Can I maybe try a little bit? Sure. Small, small, small piece. Can I have the whole thing? No. The baked apples were getting rave reviews all around, but we did find one budding food critic who was not that impressed. Oh well, all the more for her sister. Scarecrows of all shapes and sizes are starting to take shape. Sometimes Alma has to help out with quality control. Ah, but his head is kind of square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe we need to add more in there, huh? Yeah. That's a little better. Okay, maybe too much brown sugar on her baked apple. For budding carpenters, there's a chance to build your very own birdhouse. I think she's doing pretty good. Are you having fun today? Yes. Yeah, what's been your favorite part about today? Making the birdhouse. Making the birdhouse? Oh, it's so much fun to be able to bring your family out to an outdoors kind of event where there's um, things to do with your kids of all ages, but also just have them roaming around and discovering things for themselves. Meanwhile, Madeline is savoring the last few bites of her baked apple crisp. Madeline, what's been your favorite part of today? Eating my crisp. Hmm, her priorities are a lot like Elma's. Speaking of which, it's time for her to bake an apple. She's heard the bigger ones turn out best, so she's not holding back. Add some butter, a healthy scoop of brown sugar, some oats, some cinnamon. Oh, whoops. 
Emma wraps it up, puts her name on it, and she's good to go. All right. Does it matter where I put it? I want this to taste amazing. You want it in between the burners right there. OK. Yeah. There she is. There you go. And? Yummy. Absolutely. Cooked. Apples are a hit, so. They are a hit. You, you know, children's happiness depend on you. It's true. And I don't think I've seen any unsatisfied people. So when I give them their apples, they're super happy. So that makes me feel awesome. OK, well, you better get back to work because my apple's in there. Now it is tastes delicious. All right. And so it did. Alma says she enjoyed every savory bite. Oh my God. Throughout the year, the Devonian has special events for everyone. Find out more at devonian.ualberta.ca. There's nothing like a stroll through a garden to ease tense nerves. And with over 11,000 plant species here at the Devonian Garden, there's something for everyone to simply stop and smell the flowers. There's also a research side to this remarkable landscape as we hear from Dr. Lee Foote, the director of the University of Alberta Devonian Botanic Garden. The Devonian Botanic Garden is spread out over 180 acres and can offer visitors over 11,000 variations of plants displayed in a wide range of landscapes. Dr. Lee Foote is the director of the garden. A place that people come to be changed to learn. Underpinning everything we do at the garden is the educational concept. Whether it's preschoolers out here that are first learning about plants, or whether it's kindergartners that are first learning about catching insects in the pond, or whether it's a grade schooler sitting under a tree doing sketching or haiku, all the way up to the octogenarians that come out on our green express bus and visit the garden for just a little solace, quiet time, and coffee with friends. We also have a large cohort of very serious gardeners, people that come out and take the Master Gardener nine-month program. These are professionals from province and from greenhouses and things that uh, want to really become advanced gardeners and le learn the philosophy, the biology, and the horticultural practices that take them to the next step. The garden is a place of discovery, even for those of us that hunt or fish. Well, the angler in me was quite thrilled when I walked down and saw that our, our koi had bred and we had a whole bunch of small fish in our Japanese garden pond. I, I draw the parallel that between casting a line is an act of hope. You cast into murky water, you hope for a big fish. But a gardener's not that different. A gardener takes nice loam soil, plants a seed, pats it down, waters it, and steps back with the same hope and delay that nature will reward them. So. I'm finding lots of parallels with this, as we talk about often, the linkage to nature that gardening can provide as angling, as somebody that wants to sit in a tree with a bow and arrow. Uh, these are acts of hope and they're vivifying. They're, they're just uplifting and, and people do better throughout their year because of it. In many ways, the garden is a study about people just as much as it is learning about the plants. Some excellent research that suggests that people that have spend time in nature or even having a view of nature heal better or healthier have lower stress levels and we're trying to get some idea of how to measure that it's not hard to understand what lee means by that no matter where you turn in the garden there's something that will stimulate your senses there are even specific areas of the garden encouraging you to touch taste smell and see and if for some reason you're still wanting more stimulation well, a trip into the butterfly house will not disappoint. So if you are looking for a place to take the kids, the Devonian Garden is a great place to introduce them to the outdoor world. These are the sort of experiences that a lot of kids growing up in an urban environment just don't get. And many times, it's the first step towards a really active outdoor engagement for life. Coming up, are today school kids afraid of nature? Alma follows a group that is getting some hands-on experience. And pretty big. Yeah, okay. okay. Alberta Conservation Association. Since 1997, more than $120 million has gone towards conserving wildlife and fish and securing habitat, creating a lasting legacy for Albertans.
When bitumen is extracted, a group of organic compounds known as namphetic acids are released and end up in tailings ponds. Those compounds are toxic to fish. So when it comes time to turning a tailing pond into a duck pond, what's the best way to purify the water? Well, that's one of the challenges facing Syncrude researcher Warren Zubot. Mother Nature, on her own accord, will slowly biodegrade these compounds to remove them. And, but the research I've been looking at is to see if we can speed that up. When bitumen is upgraded into oil, one of the byproducts is petroleum coke. Here's a sample. It's basically just a very fine powdery charcoal. We filled these columns full of the coke here, so this is just uh, this material here, and we then drained tailings pond water through the column here and collected it out the bottom here, and then what we're doing is testing the quality of the water before and the quality of the water after. Here's the recent test Warren did. The water on the left is before filtration. Those organic compounds give it the yellowish tinge. The jar on the right is after filtration. And it turns out this material, when you mix it with water in the right proportions, acts like activated carbon, like a Brita water filter. Researchers filled this aquarium with filtered tailings pond water to see if it could now support aquatic life. The fish in here are about a year and a half to two years old now, and they started off actually relatively small, and uh, they're doing very well. The process shows great potential in the lab. Will it work on a larger scale out in the field? Syncrude will be putting it to a test later this summer. Mother Nature could filter out the organic compounds all by herself, but it could take easily 20 years. If all goes well, Syncrude can make it happen in two or three weeks. Hey, welcome back, Elma. I'm glad you survived the apples. Hey, you know, folks are just having a wonderful time back here, but there's also an opportunity for people to learn things. Yes, Michael. While the Devonian Gardens are a lot of fun, it's also a great educational resource, as I discovered by hanging out with some high school students. The class across the pond is searching for creatures that lurk all around the water, and I just heard that somebody found a leech, and he's actually holding it in his hands, so let's go check that out. Yeah, most leeches oh, are actually quite docile. What's that? A leech? Oh. That's a leech? Yeah. He has no teeth. Who wants to hold him? I don't know. No. No. <laughs> oh, come on. I do. Never mind. <laughs> it's really neat. The kids come in usually quite fearful of what they're going to find, especially with the leeches. So we get a chance to catch these leeches, some big guys, you know, as long as this, and the kids get a chance to actually hold them. Um, usually goes from, oh, I don't want to touch it, to my turn, I want to hold the leech next, which is so great for us to see. And you're not grossed out at all holding it? No. I, I actually like leeches. Really? Why? What does it feel like? It's squishy. Well, Elma, time to suck it up. Oh, it feels um, slimy. There's many, many species of leeches in Alberta. Most of them aren't bloodsuckers. Most of them are actually quite friendly. They're decomposers. They like to crawl on the ground, eat dead leaves and such. They don't have the mouth parts to, to suck our blood. Leeches weren't the only thing being caught by this grade 9 class today. Their nets were scooping up all sorts of creatures, boatmen, freshwater shrimp, damselflies, back swimmers, and many more, including good old frogs. Next up on the tour, a hike through the forest. It's a chance to discover more about the plants and trees that grow in our area. According to Emma, the video game generation suffers from a disconnect with nature. There are kids who need their electronics, they stay inside, and they've become afraid of the outdoors. Same with their parents, they're scared of the outdoors because they don't know it anymore. And we're seeing a whole bunch of disorders come out of this. Um, one that's been coined is the nature deficit disorder, where children, they sometimes think that this is uh, where a lot of this ADD and ADHD is coming from, is kids don't know how to relax. They're getting too stimulated all the time. Okay, what do we get for B? White, White birch. birch. White birch. C. Pin cherry. Pin cherry. What our programs do is bring kids back outside, help them slow down a little bit, get to know the environment so they're not as frightened of it. Can I have a volunteer? Maybe. Right He's got a blindfold already. I'll do it. This next exercise is called hug a tree. One partner is blindfolded while the other leads them to a tree of their choice. They hug the tree and then are led back to where they started and must find the same tree. There you go. This is just a fun way to get up close to the trees and learn a little bit more about our forest here in Alberta. Okay. 
Well, as a teacher, it's uh, really good for me to see the students being able to explore and use the information they've learned in class. That real world experience, it helps. Like yesterday, they found a salamander. It's an endangered species in Alberta. So we took a little extra time and they rescued it and they saved it, so it was good. And here he is, just before he was set free in a nearby swamp. Here at the Devonian Botanic Garden, you can find all kinds of cool species and animals, and they're all so neat. This guy is a tiger salamander that I'm holding in my hands, and honestly, he's just so cute. Look at him. Remember, he has editing skills. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have here? Okay, Hannah. Deer horns. Okay, very good. Does anybody want to say something else? Yeah. A moose. Moose, yeah. Moose, and that one's an elk. Okay. This is the mule deer. This is the white tail. This grade five class is in green school. Five straight days of field trips to the Devonian. We have time to get the kids concentrating on, on little things and, and using their observational skills. I really think there's a, a need for kids to connect that knowledge stuff to their experience and getting their hands dirty. And Does this experience make you less afraid of touching things in nature? Yes and no. I mean, spiders I still don't like, absolutely. I wouldn't touch those, but maybe some different kinds of bugs. It makes me like more aware of like what I can touch. Like Most people, especially me, um, don't like skunks just because of um, the smell. Now we learned that they don't want to actually smell. They want to just tell you not to, to go there. The Devonian Botanic Garden offers a lot of variety for students, from the not-so-glamorous leeches to something as beautiful as the butterfly house. Mmm, strawberries. It smells so Here students can explore butterflies and plants from all over the world. The average lifespan of these butterflies is just 14 days. Mm, not too sure what these two are up to. The Butterfly House provides one more opportunity for these students to get their hands on with nature. These are called stick bugs. So who wants to hold one? No, it's okay. Okay, come up here and I'll uh, give them to you. Don't worry guys, these guys won't bite, they're herbivores. Looks to me like many of these students are conquering their fear of nature. Look, it's having a dance party. The Devonian Botanic Garden has field trips for all levels of school children from preschool to grade 12. Tours are offered from May through October. Find out more at devonian.ualberta.ca. Hey everyone, our outdoor adventure will continue right after this. Oh, was that a bite? The Alberta Hunter Education Instructors Association delivers conservation programs about Alberta's wildlife and fish which need to be managed for future generations. To date, AHIA has instructed over one million students. In the past, well sites in northern Alberta were left to naturally regenerate. Today, Devon Energy is using innovative methods to make areas like this return to their natural state faster. We brought in a hole with a ripper tooth and broke through the frost. There was 18 to 24 inches of frost and broke those pieces up and, and uh, rearranged them in, in varying patterns. They've just become uh, mounds and hummocks, which is what we find naturally in the black spruce and uh, tamarack fens. Uprooting peat moss like this allows some very old seeds to germinate. The researchers from U of A have looked at that and said it could easily be a 500 to 1,000 year old seed because it takes uh, many decades to build up this much layer of organic in these forests. And Devin is currently working with those U of A researchers to find even better methods of reclamation. That's good news for caribou and other wildlife who live here. Arboreal lichens are, are what uh, some of the woodland caribou are have their favorite meals from. Hi, I'm Brad Fenson with the Alberta Fish and Game Association and your Outdoor Tip of the Week. Anyone that spends time in the outdoors knows the advantage of carrying a knife. It can be used for a wide range of applications from cutting and sharpening a stick to roast your hot dogs for lunch or cutting rope or cord to prepare a shelter. Shopping at your local sporting goods store can be a little bit overwhelming with such a wide array of options and finding the right knife takes careful consideration. 
everyday carry knives like this one need to be compact, easy to use and versatile. They usually cater to an individual sense of taste and style which is why we see so many colors and handle options. These knives are primarily used for everyday tasks such as opening boxes or trimming threads from our work clothes. Outdoor knives, however, meet the needs of a much broader range of people from backpackers to hikers, campers, river rafters or even rock climbers just to mention a few. Outdoor knives must be rugged, lightweight and easy to carry. Many can be open and closed with one hand, leaving the other hand free for climbing, balancing or even paddling your canoe. Many knife blades are partially serrated. The serrated blade will cut cleanly and smoothly through things like rope and avoid tugging or sawing to get the job done. And there are no frayed ends to deal with. There are many options for both folding and fixed blade knives and the key to both is easy access and use. There are options to clip knives onto a pocket or vest or attach to a day pack or tackle bag. The key is knowing where it is and being able to access it quickly when you need it. My favorite has several options for attaching it to either a belt loop or to the side of my vest or even a jacket or external bag. However, there isn't a knife that can do it all, even though manufacturers have tried. Anglers will still need a proper fillet knife to take with them to prepare a shore lunch and hunters will need a sturdy rugged blade for field dressing. The safest knife is always a sharp knife. Accidents happen when you have to strain or force a knife blade to get the job done. A sharp knife will make for quick, effortless tasks that will help prevent accidental cuts or punctures. And I hope this helps you cut through all the options when looking for a knife to take on your next adventure. Wild Sheep Foundation Alberta promotes and enhances wild sheep populations and habitat through the funding of programs that support responsible wildlife management, conservation education, youth involvement, and the preservation of our hunting heritage. Canada's cold water resources need you. Trout Unlimited Canada delivers conservation results for our freshwater ecosystems and their cold water resources. Our work includes stream restoration, scientific research, and education through our Yellowfish Road program. Oh, it appears I dozed off. Hey, Elma, let's get to work. So this is how I'm going to be spending my night tonight, and Brad's going to show me how it's done. All right, you excited? Comfort camping at its finest. I'm ready to see. So this is your own private deck here. you got your two chairs, place for your beverage. And you want to take a look inside? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Just help me roll this up, and we'll... Ooh, I'm sneaking a peek and it's looking very pretty. Oh, it's nice and cool in there too. Yeah, shade. So ideally this would sleep about four people? Yeah, a family of four would, you know, could sleep four adults. It just depends on, you know, how, how cozy you are with the people you're yeah. coming with. Great for couples and great for small families. Mm -hmm. I think the concept is really neat. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of your home out in nature, so if you're not fully comfortable with being, you know, go-getter, sleeping on the ground, you mm. can totally enjoy this. And I want to point out the beautiful view. I mean, that's something that you can't find anywhere else. And you can see across into the cottonwood forest and into the badlands. Very common, you'll probably see um, eagles and, and vultures soaring above the river here tonight. It's beautiful. I can sit on this lovely bed and I can look out, have my beautiful view. I've got a fridge, cold beverages, I've got a fan, windows open, luxury. We get a lot of international travelers here. Europeans or people from Asia or South America aren't going to come all the way to Canada with all their camping gear. That's right. So this allows them to have that camping experience. There's people that have done lots of camping and are just ready for something a little bit more, you know, don't want to sleep on the ground anymore. And then there's people that have never camped and for them it can be intimidating. Price, it's, it's less expensive than your average hotel room, so it's definitely within the reach of anybody. It's definitely a unique experience, so I'm looking forward to spending the night here and oh, enjoying it. You're going to have a great night. a heater. Perfect. Heater if it gets cold, uh, fan, lots of ventilation, so, and these are good sturdy wall tents, just like that the, uh, you know, fossil hunters used to use in this area, so there's a little historical kind of feeling to it as well. There's a park moment. Well, it's far too early to retire for the evening, so let's get an ice cream cone like Buster here and head out on a sunset photo tour. Off we go into some of the secret areas of the nature preserve at Dinosaur Provincial Park. 
This two-hour guided tour is scheduled for photography's magic time, those last couple of hours before sunset when shadows bring new life to landscapes. During the day it was hot, 30 degrees, but now it's a more comfortable 25. At each stop we're given ample time to get to the perfect shot, or simply to just soak up the natural beauty of the Badlands. Whether you're a budding professional or a point-and-shoot photographer like myself, you're sure to get stunning shots. At times, you just want to put down the camera, sit on a rock, and soak it all in. Over here on the very right-hand side, you're going to see some hoodoos there that kind of look like they have chocolate chip cookies on top. We call those the foodoos. Those chocolate chip cookies are actually a harder rock called ironstone. Hard rains wash away the softer sandstone below them, leaving some pretty interesting shapes. This is a, a rock a hoodoo that we call Fred the Camel. There's actually literally pictures of him all over the world. People have been taking pictures of this guy for years. When I was in Kenya a year yeah. ago, I actually saw a picture of him there. Just a little lower? OK, good. It is absolutely magnificently beautiful, beautiful. So it's inspiring me to um, be more creative than I am now. It's uh, nothing like seeing Mother Nature at its finest and with the sunset too, it's even better. Welcome to Valley of the Moon. It may be a harsh environment, but it's one of the most beautiful places that you could ever find in Alberta. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's go explore. We're pretty much uh, done the the main portion of our sunset tour. Have you guys enjoyed yourself so far? Yeah. yeah. This is an amazing place. Oh, thank you. Wow, what a great way to see the Badlands. Time to head back to camp. And as the sun sets on this beautiful setting along the Red Deer River in southeastern Alberta, I realize I'm feeling a little tuckered. I'm looking forward to a solid queen-size mattress instead of a skinny air mattress. Wow, what a gorgeous evening. Way off in the distance, I can hear crackling fires and children's voices. If you're into regular camping, there are plenty of sites here to pitch your tent or park your RV and sit by the fire, make some s'mores with the whole gang. Best to reserve ahead. On weekends in summer, the campground is often full. Find out more about comfort camping and the sunset tour at albertaparks.ca. Alberta Conservation Association. Since 1997, more than $120 million has gone towards conserving wildlife and fish and securing habitat, creating a lasting legacy for Albertans. Hey folks, we're winding down our time here at the uh, Devonian Garden and a real pleasure to introduce Carrie Mulholland, the Director of Communications and Event Planning. Carrie, what a fantastic day. You, you just must love your job. I have probably one of the best jobs in the world. I really do. Don't tell anybody how good it is. <laughs> they might decide not to pay me anymore. <laughs> Carrie, obviously uh, there is something going on at the Devonian, literally it seems in every season of the year. There really is and there's something in every season and for every interest. We have events that like this one, the Fall Family Festival, that's geared to family activities intended to get people outside with their kids having a good time in nature. We have events for uh, horticulturalists who are interested in learning how to grow things like our Fruit Growers Festival and events that go throughout the season including our very beautiful Luminaria event in December. Carrie, thank you so much for everything you've done here for us today. It's just been a real hoot hanging out. Well, thank you. Remember, everyone, the outdoors is here for all of us to enjoy. If you see someone taking away from that enjoyment, call the Report a Poacher line. If you would like to watch previous stories featured here on Let's Go Outdoors, then track down our website at letsgooutdoors.ca. Till next time, I'm Michael Short. Let's Go Outdoors. I know where I want to be Outside wild and free Let's go outdoors